Hello and welcome once again to worship with us here at Hull Citadel Salvation Army Community Church. We're going to begin our time together with a song, if you're using a songbook, it's 358. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. going to spend some time praying just now and again it's one of those weeks where I'm sure we can all think of people and situations that we'd like to be praying for and another week where I hear of more people who are suffering particularly from the virus or for the effects that it's had on their livelihoods. We're going to uh, use a song to help us with our praying today. And again, in the songbook, it's 345. To be in your presence, to sit at your feet, this is my desire. So as we come before the feet of the risen King, we can lay down those burdens, we can lay down those names before Jesus. And maybe you will want to be thinking of those people as this song is played, and maybe you'll want to, to sing along and be thinking of them as we do that. Thank you.
Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be in your presence, that you delight in sharing time with us. But today, Lord, for some of us, we may come with heavy hearts and with, with problems and with things that are maybe seeking to hold us back. Lord, today we want to hand all those things over to you. And also we want to hand over those people who we know and who we love, who are suffering at this time. Those who are in hospital or in caring environments for a whole variety of reasons. Lord, we pray that they will feel you ever near. And that for families and friends who are helping to look after them, or that are worried about them, Lord, that you will bring them rest as well. But finally, Lord, I ask that you be with us in our time of worship together today, that you will be the heart and the centre of it all, and that we will finish this time knowing more and feeling no, knowing more about you and feeling ever closer to you. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to have some Bible readings in a moment. And again, it's uh, two Bible readings this week. The first is one that we used a couple of weeks ago, and it's taken from Jeremiah chapter 31 and verses 31 to 34. After we've had that Bible reading, we'll listen to Hendon Band playing a piece of music called Since Jesus. And then our second Bible reading will be from Luke chapter 22, and verses 14 to 20. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more.
When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So over the last few weeks, we've been looking at how covenants have been seen historically and what they mean for us. Now, many of us may have signed legal covenants, such things as will happen with housing and property purchases. They're usually a set of expectations for each party and penalties if those expectations are not met. But we also have seen how the expectations we might have for ourselves to be good enough for God are pretty much impossible to meet. What we need and what God offers through Jesus is a new kind of covenant. And a new kind of covenant requires a new kind of justice. Now we may recognise that we've all broken our covenants. We may recognise how broken we might be. But Jesus brings us into this new covenant with being a new kind of broken for us. And ultimately, it's this that brings us the ultimate, the final covenant. Now, if we think that we can be good enough for God to keep enough rules consistently, to never waver from the narrow path, or even maybe believe that we can impress God enough, then we're seriously mistaken. Once we put rules and regulations into this most vital of covenants, we miss the point of actually being with God. But it needs to be a new kind of covenant. It can't be like covenants were before. And this is what Jeremiah says. He says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors. That old way just won't work. That's why we need not just a new covenant, but a whole new kind of covenant. It needs to be a covenant that doesn't insist on us having to keep every term and every condition. This needs to be a covenant that will free us to be good rather than binding us to fearful rule keeping. But it also needs to be just. It also needs to be right. It needs to be fair. So what we need then is a, is a new kind of justice. One that doesn't depend on us having to memorise and strictly observe every tittle and jot of the law. And this is what Jeremiah had to say. He says, this is the covenant I will make. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will we be held captive to our ability or lack of ability for rule keeping. By being in covenant with the living, loving, gracious, merciful God, our ability to become holy will become supernaturally natural by the infilling of the Holy Spirit. God so desires to be with you that he has done everything to make it happen. And this is always the work of God, to bring humanity and God together. Because he loves you. Because you matter to the creator of the universe. Now, of course, you may insist that those rules are still broken. Or maybe you'll even look at yourself and say, but I'm so broken. How can this justice work? Jesus 
offers a new kind of broken there. When we look at that passage in Luke, it says that he took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Jesus became and is our righteousness for us. He takes our brokenness literally upon himself. This is his body broken for us. In this symbolic act, he was giving a foretaste of what was about to happen to him. Every act of righteousness that is required is fulfilled in the life of Jesus. Living as the only perfect example of humanity. And every need of sacrifice, of atonement, is fulfill, fulfilled in his death for us. And every, every element of brokenness is consumed in his offering of brokenness, literal bodily brokenness for us. It's because of his brokenness that we can be made whole. Now what we're left with is more than just another or a different or an improved kind of covenant. It's more than just a better version of covenants. This is the ultimate covenant at the cost of the ultimate sacrifice. When Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Now, whilst we may make covenants with God and with one another, this covenant, this blood-bought covenant, supersedes all and any others. Without the covenant bought and paid for by Jesus' life, sacrifice and resurrection, no other covenant makes sense. It isn't us making covenant with God in order to please him or even to impress him. It is God that does everything and more to make covenant with us because he sees that we are worth it because he loves us because that's who God is now as we think on those words and what that means for us we'll have another song and you may want to consider the goodness and the greatness of God and your response to that we're going to have another song it's 471 in the Salvation Army songbook if you're using that only by grace can we enter? And it tells us, Lord, if you marked our transgressions, who could stand? And I think we know what the answer is, none of us.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your love and your mercy, even your passion for saving us, for being everything that we need to be with you. Lord, help us to remember that covenant you have made all the work to make with us, that we may live in gratitude and in fulfilment, the embodiment of the goodness that you desire to create in and through us, that others may see you through our lives. We pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you for taking the time to be with us in worship again today. We're going to finish with one last song, and again in the songbook, it's 861. In Christ alone, my hope is found. So today I pray that you will be blessed with the knowledge of your salvation, that you will know the joy of being in community 
with Trinity, with God the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And this will do more than fulfil your life, but make you productive and cause you to be a blessing as well as being blessed. And I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen.